In this example, I'm trying to solve a first order linear differential equation. And uh, the way that I know that it's linear is that it fits the template that, that it should fit in order to be a linear differential equation. And here's that template I was talking about. You have to have uh, the derivative of y with respect to x, then a function of x times y equals a function of x on the right hand side. Um, some, some important things to look out for when you're trying to write this as a, a linear differential equation is the coefficient of dy dx should be 1. And so if you have like 5 dy dx or x dy dx, what you would do to fix that is you would divide both sides by that coefficient. It's a very common thing to have a, a coefficient in front of dy dx that you have to get rid of. Um, anybody who does not have a y or a y prime gets moved to the right hand side and that that's uh, what creates your function of x q of x on the right hand side. Uh, we should never have a y times a y prime. Any any terms that have y and y prime should be added or subtracted, never multiplied if it's going to be a linear differential equation. Okay, so if it is a linear differential equation, if you can put it in this form like we like we did dy dx Here's your function of x times y, and here's your q of x on the right-hand side. If you can put it in this format, then we have a way of solving it. Well, we went through most of that theory. It was a lot, pretty messy and somewhat complicated in the last video. And so I'm going to assume we have we know that and know how to solve these guys. In this video, I primarily just want to practice solving one. So let, let's remind ourselves what the steps were one more time and then we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, the first step has already been done for us. Uh, step one is to put the differential equation into what we call standard form. This form right here is what we call standard form the, with the criteria that I spoke of just a moment ago. All right, so it's in standard form already. And then once that's done, kind of the key to the problem is finding this thing called an integrating factor. Integrating factors are kind of confusing, and so I would suggest watching the previous video if you haven't already done so. But basically, this guy fixes a lot of the problems that we have. Uh, most textbooks use the notation mu of x. That's this symbol here. Uh, some textbooks use u of x. It doesn't matter what you call it, but your integrating factor by definition is this. This is very important to memorize. It's e times uh, e raised to the integral of whatever p of x is. This should be committed to memory. Chances are your instructor will not give this to you on a test. You'll need to know this. Now, what is that exactly? Well, p of x is defined differently for every problem. Uh, it, it's the whatever the coefficient of y happens to be. So like in our example, our p of x is negative one over x. So our mu of x for this problem would be e to the integral of negative 1 over x. And we'll do that in a minute, uh, just not at this moment in time. It's coming up shortly. Okay, so you find the uh, integrating factor. Now, once you find him, what do you do with him? Well, you're going to multiply this guy through both sides of the differential equation. That's obviously allowed. It may not be clear at this moment why that's helpful, but certainly we can do that if we feel like it. Well, it turns out this turns out, uh, this turns out to be a very big help to us. All right, because what happens when you multiply through this integrating factor, especially to the left-hand side, is the left-hand side becomes the product rule, which is a big help. And again, you'll see why that's a big help when we work our example. And once that's written as a product rule, you're only about two steps away, algebra-wise, from getting your answer. Okay, so if these didn't make total, you know, good sense, then just hang with me, and uh, and they'll all kind of kind of. Um, uh, makes sense as, as we go. So uh, here we go. Um, here's our differential equation here. P of x is negative 1 over x. So step 1 is going to be to find mu of x, uh, which is e raised to the integral of negative 1 over x. So the negative is a constant, which I can pull outside, and we'll have 1 over x. And this will be e to the negative natural log of x, obviously, because the integral of 1 over x is obviously natural log of x. Now, unfortunately, the e and the natural log can't cancel. 
because of that negative, uh, unfortunately, but we can use uh, an algebra property of logarithms that says you can pull that negative back up into the exponent for x and make it x to the negative 1. And so mu of x at the end of the day, once the e and the natural law cancel, you would get x to the negative 1, or we could write it as 1 over x. So this is the guy who's going to fix a lot of our problems. Now, he's not our answer or our solution to the differential equation. He's just going to help us. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply this guy to the left side and the right side of this differential equation. Um, now I can kind of squeeze it in here. I should have left myself some more space. Um, times 1 over x to both sides of the differential equation. Let's see what this turns out to be. The left-hand side would be... 1 over x times, I'll just call it y prime for short, uh, minus 1 over x squared, that's 1 over x times 1 over x, times y uh, equals 2x times 1 over x is 2, and minus 1 over x times 1. So we get this right here. Now, okay, why is that helpful? What, what on earth did that do for us? Well, something really, really nice. Look at the left-hand side. In, in the steps, I'd mentioned something about the left-hand side. Notice what we have here is we have the derivative of y times 1 over x plus, I know it says minus, but let's consider it a plus, y times the derivative of 1 over x, which was negative 1 over x squared. And so the left-hand side is the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. This guy's the product rule. It's the product rule, and the reason that that came to fruition was because we multiplied uh, through by the appropriate term, this, this mu of x. That's what the integrating factor does. And so it seems coincidental. You might not believe me that this will work next time, but it will. Trust me, it, it will. Um, so anyways, the left-hand side will be the derivative of what product? Like what, what's the product whose product rule would yield this? Uh, one of the terms is obviously y, because you have y in one expression and y prime in the other. The other expression is one over x, because you have one over x, and then you have the derivative of one over x, this negative one over x squared. Uh, still equal to two minus one over x. There's really nothing to do on the right-hand side um, I, I just simply rewrote the left-hand side is all. Okay, so this seems better, but, but we're still, you know, still a little lost as to where we go from here. Well, remember, what does it mean to be a solution of a differential equation? It's a function or equation that makes the differential equation true, and, uh, and that would be like a function y, so to speak. Well, here he is. Th this is our solution right here. Uh, I can see him. I, he's just not solved for, unfortunately. And there's two things in my way. There's two reasons that y is not isolated. Number one is times 1 over x, which I need to get rid of. And there's a derivative that I need to get rid of. So now uh, let's just take care of these one at a time. How would you get rid of the derivative, which is kind of the outermost operation done? Well, I think we would integrate to get rid of the derivative. And so if we do, sure enough, the derivative goes away, and you would get 1 over x times y uh, equals, and then let's integrate the right-hand side. Integral of 2 would be 2x, and minus integral of 1 over x would be natural log of the absolute value of x. And let's not forget, because it's an indefinite integral, we, would, we need a plus c in here somewhere. So we're almost done. Just hang with me for another another few moments. Um, again, here is my solution. I, I can see him. He's, he's just sitting right here. Um, this is our function, uh, y of x. Uh, I just have to have him isolated. And I think I can do this with one last simple step of multiplying both sides by x. Multiply the left side by x, and x and 1 over x cancel. And then we'll distribute 2x squared minus x natural log of x plus cx. We'll just distribute that guy through to all three terms on the right-hand side. So our final answer would be y of x equals 2x, I believe it's squared if I'm not mistaken. Yep, 2x squared 
minus x natural log of the absolute value of x uh, plus c times x. Now, for a lot of other problems, you have a constant times a constant and it stays just plus c, which is a generic constant. That's not applicable here, unfortunately, because we don't have a constant times a constant. We have a constant times x. And so you can't do that because x is a variable. So in our final answer, we're going to leave this c times x. So that's that's important to realize as well. And, uh, and we did it. We did it. This is our guy. Um, this function right here, this function of x, is the solution to this differential equation way back here. All right? And so uh, I'm not going to do it just for time's sake, but if you took that guy we found and plugged it in right here and plugged his derivative in right here, the left-hand side really would equal the right-hand side. And so the only way we, we solved this was because uh, we knew this, these steps. We knew these, these techniques to follow. And again, this only works if, in fact, it's linear. Um, if it's not linear, this doesn't work. Um, this is obviously much different than being separable, which is another technique. And so now you're starting to see, now you're starting to see, depending on how the differential equation is categorized, first order, second order, separable, linear, you might have this technique or that technique, and they're all different, but they all do their job. If it fits a certain criteria, you can solve it certain ways.